It's finally here. It is finally here. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and here it is. AMD's answer to DLSS. But will it suck? I don't know, but there's a lot that sounds very, very promising about this, including how broadly supported it's planning to be. Do you realize this is going to run on uh, graphics cards from NVIDIA? Yeah, from NVIDIA. Not only that, but like NVIDIA cards that can't run DLSS. So, whoa. If this is actually good when it comes to image quality, then this could be a game changer. But that is a big if. I really hope that this thing pays off. Anyway, let me get you guys the details. I said it's actually here, but it, it's actually here on June 22nd. So <laughs> there we go. June 22nd is the date. And what do we expect from this stuff? Well, they're saying that you can get an average of two times faster versus 4K native performance if you're running this um, at a, you know, performance, uh, you know, mode. There's different levels of quality. Let's, let's jump over here. So there's four quality settings, and that's similar to DLSS, right? Where you can drop the internal rendering resolution in order to gain more frame rate, but at a trade-off to the uh, outputted image quality. Um, they're saying that over 10 game developer studios and engines are supporting this in 2021. That is this year. We're not having to wait till next year to get that support. That's over 10 already. And over 100 GPUs and CPUs. Broad support. This, to me, is the most interesting thing about this entire announcement. I was expecting that this might run on, you know, every 6000 series AMD card. Or maybe that they'd backport it to some older AMD cards, maybe RDNA 1 cards. This goes further back than that. And then I was not expecting this to run on NVIDIA cards, but it does. Talk about broad support. Yeah, there we go. Okay, but does it suck? Well, here's this picture again. So we've got, this is apparently Godfall, rendered on an RX 6800 XT. And it's at the 4K Epic preset with ray tracing on, okay? And at those settings, it runs at 49 frames per second here native on this card. Now, here are the four quality settings being compared here. This is ultra quality running at 78 frames per second, quality running at 99, Balance running at 124 and performance at 150. Yes, you see that right. That is a three times performance gain, slightly more, right? 50 times three would be 150. So this is a pretty crazy increase in performance if you go down to performance mode. But I'd imagine that similar to DLSS, where if you're running on the, like the performance or ultra performance mode, there does tend to be an image quality hit. Now they're trying to show it here with these lines here as if we're like, picking out the differences, I'm going to be honest, I don't really see a whole heck of a lot of differences here. Maybe I need my glasses on. I honestly took them off to film the video, but I'm pretty close to my screen here. I don't see a lot of differences. But again, this is released by AMD as their big showcase, right? This is their big showcase. So, you know, uh, we're going to see the best of all possible worlds <laughs> as far as how this thing could go. I think an alarm on my phone is about to go off, guys, and I'm not re-recording this video. I'm just leaving that in there. Hey, guys, welcome to the show. I do this as a hobby on very limited free time. Anyway, <laughs> um, so... I don't think we should overanalyze this particular image. That's what I'm saying. We really need to see this thing hands-on with independent reviews before we have any idea what the image quality is actually going to deliver. But man, if it does deliver with this kind of performance and broad support, that is an absolute game changer. It is huge. Okay, next image here is what I'm talking about. NVIDIA GTX 1060. I'm sure that they grabbed a GTX card instead of an RTX card to show off the fact that this NVIDIA card cannot run DLSS. So if it's running Godfall here at 1440p epic preset at 27 frames per second, the only thing an NVIDIA user has been able to do is, well, turn your settings down, lower it from epic, 
right? That's all you've been able to do. Well, apparently you're gonna now have the option to turn on the uh, Fidelity FX Super Resolution. Running at quality mode, you can jump up to 38 frames per second. And hey, that's, you know, 38 frames per second isn't the highest thing you've ever seen, but like 27 to 38 percentage wise is a 41% gain. That's pretty big. And I can tell you that playing at 38 frames per second feels a lot better than 27. 27's borderline unplayable. 38 might not feel great, but it's a lot more playable. Hey, that's a big slap in the face to NVIDIA right there. They are supporting NVIDIA cards that NVIDIA aren't with their DLSS tech. Okay, so let's run through the little press release here. This is the uh, AMD press release. Just get to give you all the details. So the super resolution, major frame rate boost combined with high quality, high resolution graphics, four different quality modes proposed, performance balance quality and ultra quality. I pretty much already showed you that. Cross platform. FSR is not limited to the latest GPU architectures only. It runs on a large variety of GPUs. Wide API support for DirectX 12, Vulkan, and DirectX 11. It's even going back to DirectX 11. Once released, FSR can be ported onto multiple platforms without restrictions. Everything they're doing seems to be designed to open this up for massive broad support as widely as possible. It's going to be open source. In due course, they will release FSR 1.0 uh, under the MIT license uh, on GPU Open. Easy to integrate. The same great experience that you expect from AMD Fidelity FX with a low barrier of entry, full shader source code provided for a smooth and flexible integration, fixed and arbitrary, uh, arbitrary scaling supported, and highly optimized. FSR is hand optimized for fast performance across a wide variety of GPUs. And once again, we're expecting this on the 22nd. Now, um, well, like they said, there's going to be like 10 game studios and engines supporting this um, in 2021. I imagine we'll see this ported out much more broadly in the future. Okay, I don't uh, need to read you through all this stuff, but I'm going to link you guys a couple of articles in the description. There's the video cards article here. I also found a good one at WCCF Tech, but I will give you guys some of my uh, thoughts on this whole situation. First of all, I love the fact that they're backporting this to older AMD cards as well as Nvidia cards. That's amazing. I think that if this can deliver anything like DLSS quality levels in terms of image quality, that this is an absolute game changer. And then, I mean, if AMD can eventually supply a decent number of GPUs, I think people are gonna have way less of a hang up about grabbing those GPUs. But not only that, this is great news for somebody who's not buying a new GPU. Um, if the, like I said, if this delivers good image quality, this is gonna just go into place onto the card you might already have in your PC right now. Right? That's awesome. That's amazing. People stuck uh, not getting an RTX card because everything's out of stock right now. Maybe you're still sitting on your 1060. Well, you can run this. Get, you get yourself some free performance. Again, all depends on that image quality. And that's my last thought here. The fact that they're making this so easy to implement, they're saying that compared to something like DLSS, this requires much less of a... Um, much less work by the developer, and it doesn't need to be trained per game, really. Uh, apparently, it's very easy to, to port in. Again, these are the claims, right? <laughs> these are the claims. But um, if those claims are all true, it sounds great, but it has me worried. Because, I mean, NVIDIA has had a long time to work on DLSS. And the DLSS 1.0 version, honestly, I thought was a blurry mess. Sure, you got better frame rate, but the image quality was not great. I wouldn't use it. DLSS 2.0 has been much more impressive, and I believe we've just seen DLSS 2.1 in the new uh, Metro Exodus update thing that came out. I haven't had a lot of chance to ch uh, check on that, but I, I've seen stuff about 2.1 in that game. I might be uh, investigating that a little bit more in the future. But the point is that the jump from 1.0 to 2.0 was huge. AMD, to my knowledge, has not been putting that same amount of time in here as NVIDIA has. And NVIDIA is claiming that, you know, they're using their machine learning and those tensor cores and all of that to be able to produce this amazing technology and image quality, uh, do their black magic with the DLSS. Oh man, with this being so open and easy to implement, I have serious concerns about what the image quality is actually going to be like. 
I don't know, guys. Um, I'll definitely be following this story. I will definitely report more on this. If you're interested, subscribe to the channel and I'm sure I will tell you more about it. Speaking of which, I, you can leave your thoughts in the comment section. I read every comment on my channel and reply to as many as I possibly can. And I really am interested in what you guys think about this whole situation. And thank you to all of my subscribers. You're beautiful people. And I hope that you have an excellent day. This is good news, guys. This is cool. I love to see the competition here, whether it pans out or not.